Brandon Overton says tires might be more to blame for the perceived issues in dirt late model racing this season. We'll talk about that, plus all of the racing coming up over the next few days. Let's go. It's Thursday, September 15th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. So first of all, I'm really proud of you guys. We talked a bunch of modified stuff yesterday, and I had a modified on the thumbnail, and I still got a decent number of views. Normally, if I go off the rails and put anything modified related in the video thumbnail, my views absolutely tank for the day. So it's nice to see you guys are coming around. We also had a ton of comments about yesterday's topic, so well done there also. Uh, we might do a modified themed guest for an upcoming uh, episode of Dirt Tracker Conversation, so if you want more modified content, stay tuned for that. And before we get into the meat of today's show, this is my last episode for the week. I have some day job stuff going on tonight and tomorrow, so we'll be back on Monday uh, with a new show after the weekend. All right, there is a bunch of big racing happening over the next several days, and we'll start with the late model Knoxville Nationals. Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series is coming to the sprint car capital of the world for 50000 to win on Saturday night, and the smack talk has already started. Dirt on Dirt's Derek Kessinger tweeted this morning he was headed to Knoxville for the, quote, real Nationals, uh, but has since deleted that tweet and replaced it with one that just says Knoxville bound. I've also seen some taxi cab references this morning as well. Nothing like a little sprint car versus late model banter to get a weekend started. Mike Mahler is the defending late model Nationals winner. And going back to uh, 2016, he's actually won three of the last five. The other two were won by Jimmy Owens in 2018 and 2019. Thursday and Friday's prelim programs are both $7,000 to win, and drivers will earn points to set themselves up for Saturday's main event. Pays $50,000 to win and $2,500 to start. 13 race nights are still left in 2022 for Lucas, and Brandon Shepard's chances to run down Tim McCready for the championship are running out quickly. He needs to get hot and fast if he's going to make a serious challenge. And remember, a lot of those 13 nights left are not going to be full uh, points nights. The pre-entries list on the Knoxville website is pretty light at the moment, but I still expect a healthy field. We were nearly at 50 cars for this event last season, and I don't see any reason why we should be pretty close to that this year. You'll have the Lucas regulars, plus names like Chris Madden, Jonathan Davenport, Brandon Overton, Marler, Bobby Pierce, Kyle Bronson, Kyle Strickler, Shane Clanton, and more. One driver who was really good at Knoxville last year that could use a boost this weekend is Tyler Erb. He won both prelim nights a year ago, but this season with Lucas has been a little more difficult. He's won three times, but his average start and average finish are both down from a year ago, and he's only got four top tens over his previous 10 races. You can watch the late model Knoxville Nationals uh, all weekend long over on Flow Racing. And on the topic of dirt lane model racing this season, the drivers and fans continue to bemoan the perceived lack of passing and the nomination in some of the big shows from guys like Jonathan Davenport. Obviously, we've seen him win a couple of crown jewels and lead every single lap. In a piece this morning from Kevin Kovac over at DirtOnDirt.com, Brandon Overton says that the tires should have a bigger focus on them than some of the other rules that continue to be brought up. Uh, he said, quote, I didn't really care about the damn rules. I didn't really care about the damn deck height. It doesn't matter to me. What matters is when you got the wrong tires. He says at Eldora, they ran Hoosier LM30s on three corners with the LM40 on the right rear. And instead, they should be on LM20s on three corners. He and his crewman Grant Pearl point to the fact that the 30s just don't quite fall off as much during the course of a race like the 20s do. So guys are able to run harder through the long races and it makes for less of those kind of comers and goers. It's an uh, interesting perspective, especially from a driver who's had a ton of success at Eldora lately, including that win in the dream and a second in the world. I still wonder, though, why this feeling continues to permeate through late model racing. Yes, we've had some guys dominate big shows, like I mentioned before, you know, in Davenport. But there has been passing. It's not like there's been no passing. Davenport went 21st to 4th in the Dream, and Dale McDowell went 25th to 8th in the World. There's still a lot of movement happening in some of these races. We've talked about some of these uh, stats and, and some of the data you know, on past episodes. But what I think this illustrates is how difficult it continues to be to legislate and officiate these series. There are so many moving parts and a lot of really smart people on both sides. You've got the teams trying to get better. You've got the officials trying to keep things somewhat fair and economical. And Overton probably has a solid point here about the tires, but I feel like at least part of the blame for this situation could be the issues with tire supply. Uh, you know, there's a solid chance that the 30s were used at Eldora, so guys would go through less tires over the four days of racing. I do like his thoughts, though, in the piece about wanting to be part of the solution. Drivers, tracks, and series all need to continue working together towards the future and a better situation for everybody. 
Uh, the other big money racing around the, uh, the country this weekend uh, is the Fonda 200 for the Short Track Super Series. That pays $53,000 to win on Saturday night. Stuart Friesen has won the event the last two times and will be a favorite to win it again. Tonight at Fonda is the ultimate underdog 33 with any modified driver that hasn't won a feature this season eligible to compete in that event. Friday is then prelim action and uh, that includes qualifying races uh, and that will set things up for the Fonda 200 on Saturday. Uh, that pays $1,000 to start as well. Some names to expect to see at Fonda include Mike Mahaney, Alex Yankowski, Anthony Perego, Jimmy Horton, Danny Creeden, Matt Williamson, Matt Shepard, Max McLaughlin, and Ryan Godown. The entire weekend from Fonda will also be live over on Flow. And as some pointed out to me yesterday, the Freedom 76 at Grandview is also happening on Saturday night. This one is for the 358 modifieds, and the main event is 76 laps for 30,000 to win. Talked about Grandview quite a bit lately with its future in doubt. You can go find those videos from the last two weeks. I couldn't find any information on streaming for this race, and I have heard that Grandview isn't super psyched on streaming. So I'm guessing it's not available, uh, but this show will draw some cars away from Fonda. Mike Guler expect, uh, is expected to race here, as is Matt Stangle, Craig Van Doren, and others. Ryan Godown is actually the defending event winner, but he'll be over at Fonda for the 200. With no streaming, the only way to watch this one is to head over to Grandview on Saturday night. And for the sprint car fans, there are plenty of options uh, over the next several days. The World of Outlaws are in California for their final West Coast weekend of the year. Saturday show at Placerville was canceled because of the track being used by local firefighting efforts, but Friday at Hanford is still on. The Tom Tarleton Classic will pay $21,000 to win, and Carson Macedo has won the two previous runnings of that race. 2021, it was an outlaw show, while 2020, uh, it was not an outlaw show. Other previous outlaw winners at Hanford include David Gravel in 2019 and Logan Schuhart in 2017. Gravel and James McFadden lead all drivers in average finish over the last three outlaw races there. In the race for the World of Outlaws Championship, Brad Sweet currently leads David Gravel by 72 and Macedo by 98 with 12 race nights left. To overcome these deficits, Gravel needs to average beating Sweet by three spots a night for the rest of the season, while it's about four spots for Macedo. All three drivers are riding at nice top 10 streaks, but Macedo has been the best as of late. In the 10 races since the Knoxville Nationals, Macedo has four wins, a worst finish of seventh at Skagit. That happened on September 3rd. And his average finish over that stretch of 10 races is 2.6. He'll need to maintain that pace to keep up with Swee. You can watch the Outlaws from Hanford tomorrow night over on Dirt Vision. In Pennsylvania this weekend, you've got three straight nights of 410 starting today at BAPS for the Greg Hodnett Foundation race. This one should draw a nice field. They got $5,000 on the line. It is unsanctioned, but the uh, the All-Stars race the next two nights, so there's a lot of sprint car guys in the area, and you'll see a lot of big names. That includes Danny Dietrich, Anthony Macri, Buddy Kofoid, Brent Marks, and plenty more. I think I saw Gio Selzy as well. You can watch the night uh, over uh, on Sprint Car Unlimited uh, TV. Then Friday and Saturday are the All-Star shows at Williams Grove and Lincoln. The Saturday Lincoln race is the 20,000 win dirt classic. Recent All-Star winners at the Grove include Dietrich, Marks, and Macri, while Justin Peck has won the last two Lincoln races. Seems like the locals might have a little bit of the edge at the Grove, while the Travelers and kind of some of the series guys have done a little bit better at Lincoln. Tyler Courtney is on his way to the All-Star Championship, as there just aren't enough races left for Peck to run him down. The two All-Star nights will be live over on Flow. And also on Flow Racing over the next uh, couple of days, we talked about this earlier in the week, you can tune into the Hockett McMillan Memorial from Wheatland for the ASCS National Tour and the War Sprint Cars. There are also two nights of USAC Sprint Cars coming up from Circle City and Hobstadt. At Wheatland, we should have big fields for both the winged and non-winged portions. I would not be surprised to see both sides have over 60 cars. The ASCS main event Saturday pays $10,000 uh, to win and the War Show pays $4,000 to win. Derek Hagar won both prelim nights for the ASCS in 2021, while J.J. Hickel was the big show winner. Wesley Smith took the non-wing victory a year ago over Xavier Doney and Jack Wagner. We're about at the end of the war season. Corey Schutte is on his way to the championship. He has a massive 580-point lead right now. As for the USAC Sprint Cars, Friday at Circle City is 5,000 to win, and Saturday's Hustler at Hobstadt is 12 grand to win. Justin Grant has stretched away from the field a bit in the championship, but second through fourth is tight right now between Brady Bacon, CJ Leary, and Robert Ballou. Leary won at Circle City earlier this season, and Ballou is the most recent winner at Hobstop. Drop me a comment. Let me know where you're headed, what you're watching, and your weekend win picks. Curious to see what you guys got going on. 
There are eight shows on the streaming schedule today. Obviously, a lot more to come this weekend. Today's slate includes the Hawkeye Mac uh, McMillan Memorial, Fonda 200, the late model Knoxville Nationals, all of those over on Flow. There's also regional action on Speed Sport and those 410 Sprint Cars from BAPS on Sprint Car Unlimited. To see the full daily streaming schedule through the weekend, head over to dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today and for the week. Please enjoy the Dirt Racing Weekend. If you could, please like and subscribe to these videos. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We'll be back on Monday for more Dirt Tracker Daily.